Okay, that's already a lot of radiation. <laughs> go Nora, go Nora. Power armor. My people, I found my home. You have no clue how happy I am to be here. <laughs> I am so happy to be here. I, I thought we were cool. God, zero. I have zero health. <laughs> Get it? From fusion core. I have to make a risky play here. Three rat away. Five. Oh shit. No, 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 no. That was not a part of the plan. Idiot savant, please. Booyah! Today we're returning to the radioactive southwestern corner of Fallout 4, picking up right where we left off last time with plenty more to achieve, explore, and discover as we dive further into the question, can you play Fallout 4 without leaving the glowing sea? So I kind of sped through the cliffhanger that ended last video. It really was just some basic ghoul smashing that we're used to at this point. But if you recall the Wasteland bankroll that I mentioned like 500 times last video, the capsized factory will do wonders for you, containing eight Rataway in total, various other chems, and a handful of ghouls to get some XP with. This place is insanely valuable and honestly should be one of your first stops in this playthrough if you try it out. Now's the time to start using the time that you've bought yourself to stick your face into more scary green crevices and uncover more of the surrounding area in the glowing sea. See, that's where we'll start today. Prices at the Crater of Atom Trader are still too high to be worth it, so we need to collect as much as we can while bookmarking places along the way. We also have a perk point to assign, so I took the Life Giver perk for an extra boost in my health, until I remembered that radiation actually operates on health percentage, not strictly health numbers, so I didn't think it would be too useful right now. I took the Toughness perk for an added boost in general survivability. You run into quite a bit as you chart your way across the wasteland, so try to keep in mind how much healing you have in stock, how much power is in your suit, and whether or not engaging yet another group of flying annoyances is worth it for the tiny amount of XP that you'll get. Just kill me. North of the capsized factory is one of the many garages in Fallout 4 nicknamed after my dog when he gets too excited. It doesn't have much of note, however, some miscellaneous junk and a loose cigarette if that's your thing. It all adds up though, so you might as well collect it all along the way. I'm pretty sure there's also a master locked chest in here which I don't ever see being opened in favor of taking more immediately useful perks. Keep an eye out for a deathclaw and or a rad scorpion outside and try to avoid them if they're there or pit them against each other since personal entertainment is sparse out here. One shot on the Rad Scorpion and now let's leave. I thought I could shoot the Rad Scorpion once and still get the XP for it. Hey, now we can talk about this, all right? I don't need you getting all antsy on me now. Back away, back away slowly. Yeah, uh, it, it didn't work. Keep heading north and you'll find the Federal Supply Cache. You can ignore the turrets on top of the facility when arriving lest you wanna make an idiot of yourself like I did. Oh my gosh, I'm gonna break, my fists are gonna break. Oh, I didn't even do a dent. Inside this facility is some ammo, medicine, a little bit more junk. Uh, there is a locked gate with more inside, but that requires an advanced terminal to be hacked. And like I said, more pressing matters at hand. If you flip the switch inside, two protectrons will move to intercept your reckless thievery. Free fire zone. Oh, f off. Well, I should say one because uh, I'm gonna assume this second one is either being underpaid or gone through some personal stuff. He doesn't feel like fighting today. You'll probably wanna head back to your safe cave and store your junk here because you're gonna need that space for the next spot that we're going to. Just southwest of the federal supply cache is the abandoned shack. Through the trap door lies an underground base with contrary to what the audio tape you'll find says, the place was not as well stocked as they claimed. There's actually a lot of useful stuff here. Aside from all the supplies you'll find throughout the various rooms around this place, at the bottom lies a fresh suit of power armor. More importantly, a new fusion core and the means to repair our armor in the future. It is guarded by synths though, the first enemies we've encountered with actual ranged weapons. And as fun as punching them sounds, it's probably best we use the magnum found in the desk upstairs along with the ammo it comes with. It's not a lot, but we have one magnum, 11 rounds, and a dream. Probably best I, oh wow, this is gonna be tough. There's that one. I wanna get a headshot on this guy. The faster we can kill one of them, the less people that are shooting at us. He comes through this door, I'm gonna shoot him. 
I'm gonna be honest with you all. I think this might be the greatest shot I've ever hit. 11 rounds, under pressure, one shot. This is the best I've ever had. Okay, one down. Uh-oh. I need them to come into my domain. Oh, shit. Two down, five bullets left. I must end your existence. Oh, f yeah, whatever. You're fighting a dumber, stronger robot than yourself. I am equipped with the most advanced Institute sensors available. I will find you. You saw, well, you somehow lost track of me in a giant space suit. I am no longer detecting an enemy presence. Oh. Nope, 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 nope. Is this the last one? Come on. Yes. Pretty shit robot. <laughs> Who made this technology? Fire this man. It's just the left arm. Oh, no way. Oh, yes. Oh, now what do we get in terms of weapons? Remember when we first started yesterday, we accidentally fell into this church and there were about a billion ghouls. Hey, didn't mean to go. There. So the synths weren't nearly as bad of a fight as I'd thought. I forgot Fallout 4's AI can be a bit easy to strategize against, we'll put it that way. But I came out nearly unscathed, which is a victory of its own given the context. Now with an immediate power armor upgrade, an extra fusion core, some firepower, and a crap load of junk, you want to keep the momentum going into these next two locations because they're crucial for this run. You also might be wondering why we're collecting so much junk. More on that later. It doesn't take a genius to guess that the first of these two places is the ruined church. More precisely, Hope's March Pentecostal. If you're curious what a Pentecostal church is, think Christianity, but they place an emphasis on direct experience with God. Unfortunately for the believers who found themselves in the glowing sea, Nora is their God, and joining her church requires baptism by fire. We'll just go about this the intelligent way. Tally ho! When I said tally ho, I meant something was gonna happen. I'm not a first person shooter. I'm not very good at shooting games. Fuck. Shit. Panic, panic shooting. Oh, you fucker. Oh, oh my, oh my, oh my god! What is going on with my aim right now? Okay, in my defense, this all happened like 30 seconds after another YouTuber, much larger Twitch streamer than myself, Jabbo, sent his audience over, so I was under a bit of pressure, all right? At least my gunplay here looks better than the Starfield reveal gunplay. <laughs> Not only does your new parish hand deliver some fairly easy XP, but you've got a loot box on the top floor, a safe as well, and a loot chest on the bus on the first floor. Make sure to rob all of your followers as well, because by the time you leave, you'll be feeling richer than that one millionaire televangelist who can't avoid embarrassing himself on TV. The real kicker with this church is its parishioners are dedicated enough to reenact the resurrection because all of this, the loot, the ghouls, everything, will completely respawn in three days. Give or take. I'm not sure if it's exactly three days, but that's what the internet tells me, and it's what I experienced. Now, I didn't bring this up earlier because it's a lot more relevant now, but the capsized factory we were at before will also reset roughly every three days, and so will the next spot that we're gonna go to, O'Neill Manufacturing. We've leveled up, so I'm taking the Iron Fist perk. I don't plan on using hand-to-hand -hand forever, but the time I have left in this suit is valuable, and eventually it's gonna die, so I might as well get as much melee combat out of it as I can and save any ammo I find for when I'll really need it. O'Neill has okay loot for the most part, but the real winners here are the two high-level Level ghouls that you can save scum for the idiot savant bonus XP. My first time here I glossed over it, but the terminal downstairs opens up a bunker on the surface with a few more ghouls, a glowing one, and some more loot. We're definitely gonna need to come back here. Then uh, you've got the downed plane, it looks exciting on the outside, but on the inside, kinda nothing there. There is a loot chest, but I haven't seen it respawn at all after about 20 hours, so eh, disappointing. However, if you wander off just right next to the plane in the open field, I'm running into surprisingly a very small amount of enemies. What is that? Oh, welcome to fight night, punk. God, it never gets old. 
I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. God, why did it have to hit the slant of the mountain? Fight the red scorpion. No, no, what are you doing? Don't target me, target him. We're all on the same team here. Come on, fellas, let's even it out. Why don't we work together as a team, red scorpions? Oh, hey, look, the mosquitoes are here to play too. It's a party, it's a wasteland extravaganza. Everyone's here, everyone's invited. If you're not here for this fight, you're a fucking nobody. Okay, we need something else, I'm running out of ammo. All right, mosquitoes down, that's good. Nobody likes the mosquitoes. No, no, no. <gasps> it saved me. It just saved me. <laughs> I was about to be executed. Come on. Come on. Woo. Oh shit. One at a time. One at a time now. Never mind. Two at a time. Okay. Hunter is a little bit harder to stumble. Shit. There goes my arm. Oh, I lost the good arm too, you dickheads. Back off. Back off. Yeah. What's up, Hunter? Oh, you fucking ass. Thank you. Thank you. Ah! All right, one down. Oh, you think you're cool. You think you're a tough guy because you outlasted the death claw, huh? No, you're just a coward. You let the death claw chase me, and you refused to help in the slightest. You eight eyed, wannabe crab, stupid, scaly fuck. Wasteland, baby! A huge moral victory. We needed a little assist from our crustacean friends to save us, but notching our first death claw kill on our belt without leaving the glowing sea, huge victory, regardless of how many drugs we had to waste to get through this fight. As our friend Sheagorath would put it, Time for a celebration! So gather all your friends together and wait. You don't have any friends. You don't have anyone to celebrate this accomplishment with. I mean, I guess you could go back to the Crater of Adam to celebrate, but do you really want to hang out with those weirdos? You've clawed your way out of despair and climbed one of the biggest metaphoric hills in a place that's full of them. You deserve more than to hang out with some psychos that spend all day huffing gallons of toxic fumes. You deserve not just the title of biggest badass in the glowing sea, you deserve to run the whole damn place. None of you already suggested it in part one, but about 45 minutes into my first session with this challenge, I knew exactly what direction it was headed. This isn't just a mini-series where we pop into the glowing sea, take out a deathclaw, and call it a day. Starting right now, our goal is shifting from surviving in and tackling the challenges that the glowing sea will throw at us, to helping Nora girl boss her way into being the god emperor that the glowing sea needs. Nay, that it deserves. Of course, I didn't start with a thriving community right away, and you won't either. I actually started my first attempt at building a settlement shortly after that battle you just saw two minutes ago. Using a lot of the junk I'd stored up over time, if you've been paying attention in class, you'll have plenty as well by now, I built a rudimentary setup using the Workshop Anywhere mod. We're doing it. We're doing it. <gasps> we are gonna be the settlement that needs Preston Garvey's help. We are live. <laughs> All right, I can't wait to make new friends. The main things I wanted to build right away were a recruitment beacon for obvious reasons and a decontamination arch. Radiation hasn't really been an issue since the beginning of episode one because we've been in power armor this whole time and this will allow some leeway to explore without burning through our last fusion core or wasting any precious rat away. It is quite expensive to build and if you're short on the resources to make it, you can try and haggle with the crater of Atom Trader, which I don't really recommend unless you invested in charisma, which I definitely didn't do. Still though, just by wandering around, you can surprise yourself with what you might find. Oh! 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 Incredible! Amazing! Not good. Shit. Terrible. You don't think I'm gonna pathing cheese this guy? You got the wrong idea, buster. Yeah, we got him. No. 
No. God, and I just got done bragging about killing one Deathclaw. Not a part of the plan. I did not realize this fight came with DLC. Nice. I'm really glad the expansion pack decided to show up. All right, I think I found a safe spot on this little ledge here. We're good to go. Uh, come on, boys, don't run away. Run away if you think Fallout Tactics is awesome. Reloading this gun with power armor might be the most ugly reload in video game history. What the f is that? It actually covers up the whole screen. It covers up the whole screen. You think Nora will back down from a fist fight? Oh, this guy's such a... Hey, the, the red scorpion's back. Are we doing this? Are we collabing again, guys? It costs a lot of resources to get you ass off of my lawn. Why does Nora's head look photoshopped onto the armor? It's just plopped on top. Like, it looks like her head was just attached to the armor, not like she's wearing the armor. Where were we again? Oh, oh, decontamination arch. That's right. I forgot we were, uh, yeah, doing that whole thing. You should have plenty of loot from before to buy the junk you'll need, even though this strange recluse will ring you for every cap, like he works in sales or something. Where the hell does this guy even get his inventory from? Alrighty then, recruitment beacon is online, decontamination arch is active. <laughs> this is my spot. This is where I sleep. It's in a crater. Now to just sit back and wait for people to find our thriving community. So yeah, this, uh, this place didn't work for me. And I, I don't really understand why. I can't see why somebody wouldn't want to shack up at my five-star accommodations. At least at my home, they won't get asked to save a settlement every five minutes. They'll just be subject to whatever unpaid labor I decide for them. Back to the drawing board, I ended up downloading another mod called Glowing Sea Colonization. This adds seven different locations for us to choose our new home around the Glowing Sea. Out of sheer laziness and because it kept my shower within walking distance, I picked the relay tower nearby and started getting to work. I need five copper and one rubber. 3,000 for a shipment of 50 copper. I think we're gonna have to go back out and make some money. Oh no. Okay, there's no way they can follow me into the church. Everybody knows that scorpions aren't religious. Oh, you gotta be shitting me. Come on, guys. Seriously? Siri. Siri, really? Okay, fine. You wanna play it that way? We'll play it that way. Oh, they're going outside the church now. Can I fast travel? Do you think they're far enough away for me to leave? Two turret. Hey, I, I can't believe that actually worked. All right. No way they followed me. Nora, this isn't working. No, no. Oh, what, what does that mean? Is that no? Are you disobeying an order? There. That looks perfectly normal. You gotta, be, you gotta be kidding me, man. How many of you guys are there? You know, if I had my suit of armor, I'd be kicking your ass right now. Don't think you've won this war just because you have the battle. You're charging me 20 caps for corn. I can't afford two potatoes or tomatoes? What the hell are tatoes? Goblin Farms is officially open for business, baby. Who wouldn't want to live here? I know you'd want to live here. Between selling what we could for some scrap and popping into a few locations we'd already been for any junk we might have missed, and trying to avoid teleporting in seemingly infinite rad scorpions, we finally have a home. Sort of. There's a few problems we need to talk about. This relay tower and the location nearby it is almost unaffected by radiation entirely sort of ruining the point of this whole adventure. I make fun of the nerds over at the crater a lot, but something about living in constant toxicity sounds alluring, like living permanently in an influencer's Twitter mentions. If I'm going to invite people into my living space, I expect them to be immersed in the poison along with me. What doesn't kill us makes us stronger. Also, the mod I installed doesn't actually work until all seven workshops have been activated, so until that's done, I'm... we will still be alone out here. There's still so much left I want to explore, including new gameplay loops, new friends, new exploits and strategies, and of course, new drama. We're not soldiers. 
We're hoping you can help us set up some defenses before it's too late. I can't just poke him with a knife? Oh, this is not good. Sucker tried to blame me, but you never paid me, never. Oh no, you didn't. Payback is a coming, you will be running forever. Oh no, you didn't.